Good morning and welcome to worship at St. John's. It is a joy to be in worship with you this morning. If you are worshiping with us virtually, please register your attendance in the link in the comments. If you are registering with us here, please sign the pew pad and pass it to your neighbor. Um, in addition to our sermon each week, a chat back session is taking place each Sunday in room 228 at 10:15 a.m. This is a time to gather and have conversation with pastors David and Ryan about how each chapter of the book applies to our personal as well as congregational lives. You do not have to attend every week. Please come as you are able. And next week we are taking a quick sabbatical for Mother's Day. The missions committee will be hosting a barbecue with a purpose on Saturday, May 22nd. Barbecue is available for $10 a plate or $10 a pound. All proceeds from this event will go to Family Promise and the Lifehouse Women's Shelter. Tickets are now available and sponsors as well as event day volunteers are needed. Please visit the table in the lobby or contact Pete Richardson or Pastor Ryan for more information about how you can get involved. On June 20th, we will celebrate the graduating class of 2021. Parents of class of 2021 high school graduates should have received an email this week about Graduate Sunday. We also want to honor our college and advanced degree graduates by listing their names and accomplishments in the bulletin on June 20th. Please contact Sarah Crockford if you did not receive an email or if you have any questions. We recognize the celebration of Mother's Day can be a difficult and complicated day for those of us who have lost our mothers, have complicated maternal relationships, have lost children, or dealing with infertility. We invite you to gather with us for a time of prayer, reflection, and unity. Please join us this Thursday, May 6th, in the chapel at 7 p.m. for a special service. And now let us continue in our worship together.
please stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship. We are branches rooted in the vine of Christ. We come because we seek to abide in Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. We come because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, productive. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. We come because we strive to be faithful disciples. We gather for worship now to the glory of one God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. May we grow wildly as God tends us lovingly. Please be seated for our opening hymn. Please rise in body or in spirit for the affirmation of faith for Eastertide. This is the gospel which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. If we hold it fast that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Please continue with me in the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Please greet your neighbors. Make your way back to your seats. We invite the kids down forward for our moment with children. Sunday. It's good to see y'all. So today we are talking about the word serve. What do you think of when you hear the word serve? Yeah. Like serving other people? Mm-hmm. And how does that, do you think about helping? Helping people? Do you, can you tell me any ways that you can help people? Yeah, if somebody asks for your help, just do it. Yeah, good. Yes. If somebody's sick, you can help them. Maybe bring them some, some soup or see if they need any. Yeah. Yeah, you can help them. Um, I think Pastor Ryan would tell you that you could serve people by buying barbecue tickets. <laughs> yeah. The missions team is selling barbecue so that they can help different people, different agencies in our town. So that's kind of, you know, you get to eat barbecue and help people. It's a win-win, right? <laughs> a way that you can help people is by showing kindness, too. So, for example, if you wanted to really surprise your parents, you could clean up your toys and that would be very helpful. Just throwing some ideas out there. You could also, if you see somebody on the playground who doesn't have anybody to play with, you could go and play with them. That would be nice, right? There are lots of little things you can do to, sh to show kindness and to serve people. Do you think you can think of some things this week to do? Good. All right, y'all wanna pray with me? Okay. Dear God, Thank you for your blessings that allow us to serve others. Help us show kindness this week. Amen. All right, good job. Y'all can head back to your seats. Thank you for coming down. Thank you, Emily, for that plug so I don't have to do it later on. We come to the portion of our service where we lift up our joys and our concerns, those things that are weighing heavy on our hearts, and also those victories that we've seen God win in our lives and the lives of other people uh, in the week past. Uh, we want to continue to remember uh, Lila Jane Long and Beverly Moon as they're continuing to battle uh, cancer. Uh, Beverly Moon spoke with her this week. She's also added some packed pain uh, to her struggle. So we want to remember uh, them and those journeys. Uh, we want to remember Warren and Susan Baker who are going through several different things uh, medically and uh, Lee Baker as she takes care of them, their daughter. I uh, want to lift them up in prayer. And then we also want to uh, pray for Sarah Crockford and the seventh grade uh, students who are away at Asbury Hills or on their way back. At this point, we want to pray traveling mercies. They went on a confirmation retreat this weekend since they weren't un were unable to 
uh, last year. So they're traveling, so we want to lift them up in prayer uh, this morning. So I invite you to do uh, just that with me. Almighty God, whose love is beyond understanding, whose mercy is beyond comprehension, we lift up our hearts to you in prayer. Though we were captives of our sinful and rebellious ways, your love has released us. You have freed us to experience divine love in our own lives. Your atoning love has freed us from the penalty of sin, which was rightfully ours to pay. God, how can we express our thanksgiving except to praise your name and to allow your love to be seen in us? Grant to us a determined faith and a fervent love that we might be reflections of your divine grace. God, hear our prayer as we offer our petitions in the name of the one who is love, who is Christ our Lord, and the one who taught us to pray when he prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we come to the portion of the service where we give back what God has so richly blessed with us in our tithes and offering. Pastor David is uh, speaking on service today as we're going through our series, The Walk by Adam Hamilton. And, and I encourage you to think of your giving as an act of service, as a way of serving the church and those in our community. As you well know, our missions group is very active in different areas of mission and service in the Rock Hill, York County area. And your giving goes to support those things uh, as we focus on service today. There's a couple ways that you can give. You can go to the St. John's UMC Rock Hill app, or you can text St. John's RH Give to 77977. And I'm happy to announce to you today, after a long hiatus, if you would much prefer to put your offering in an offering plate as it's passed by, you can do that as well. May God be with you as you give.
Pray with me. God of the universe and God is closer than our own heartbeat. We long to dwell in your closeness, abiding in you and you abiding in us. However, the call to abide in other places is strong, to abide in the world of popularity and acceptance or in the world of increasing wealth and power centered around our own wants and our own desires. Lord, as we offer our gifts and ourselves to you, help us to turn away from other calls and abide in that place of heart's deepest desire in your son, Jesus, and he in us. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you this morning. It's wonderful to greet each of you, to see you in Christ's name. <clears throat> We have three scripture lessons, brief ones, uh, for our sermon text this morning in our third uh, session with Adam Hamilton. I will be reading from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15 in the Old Testament, from the New Testament, Matthew 20, verses 26b and 28, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. But if you don't want to worship the Lord, then choose right now. Will you worship the same idols your ancestors did? Or since you're living on the land that once belonged to the Amorites, maybe you'll worship their gods. I won't. My family and I are going to worship and obey the Lord. But don't act like them. If you want to be great, you must be the servant of all the others. The Son of Man did not come to be a slave master, but a slave who will give his life to rescue many people. God planned for us to do good things and to live as he has always wanted to live. That's why he sent Christ to make us what we are. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Serve or self. Share or keep. Save or toss. Lives, people, the world. Attitude. What and who do you want to include in your walk with Jesus and others? American journalist and activist for whom our local soup kitchen is named, the great Dorothy Day once stated, I have long come since to believe that people never mean half of what they say. And it is best to disregard their talk and judge only their actions. Reverend Admiral Ham Adam Hamilton, in his third chapter of our study book, The Walk, addresses Christian service, one of his essential five spiritual disciplines. How do you or I serve or act toward God and especially others? What is it that you do as a Christian that is different than community service that you might do through the Rotary Club or the Lions? or through any work that you do uh, voluntarily through your place of employment. What makes service, Christian service, special, unique from other types of volunteerism that you might be part of? Adam Hamilton says that a significant, vital way 
that you worship and honor God is through serving, caring, watching out for those people and causes that are dear and particular to him. And for Jesus, those dearest to him were always the people who were poor, lonely, depressed, lost, worried, hungry, needy. But I must remind you this morning, and myself as well, that you and I are not made Christians by what you do or the causes you support, as significant as they may be. You are only made to be a Christ follower well, by Christ. He chooses you, and then you respond. You answer God's deep, abiding love. And another word for this is conversion or transformation. This is an essential part of our Wesleyan theology, is that we have the choice to either choose or reject God's offer toward each of us. Many of you probably know the story of the slave trader, John Newton. He went to see it as a, as a, at a young age. He even endured being enslaved himself for a period of time. He experienced a profound conversion. He later renounced his trade and he even became a Church of England pastor. But what you probably know him most for is because he wrote two hymns that are rather famous, one more so than another, Amazing Grace and How Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. I didn't realize the latter until I did the research for the sermon this morning. Jesus had profoundly, greatly changed John Newton by that amazing grace of which he helps us sing quite often. One of the other aspects about our Methodist founder, John Wesley, which both Pastor Hamilton and I find refreshing, is to appreciate and consider greatly important two different ideas. That is, finding a path, a walk with Jesus yourself, and to express that faith in active, direct, Christ-like service and concern. Wesley believed we must hold both of these, personal piety, our own personal walk with Jesus, and the call to serve and care for others, that our lives must include both. And in our study this morning, I reminded us that Wesleyan Methodists are people on the move. We are people of action. Uh, we are not people who sit around. We are ones who have been at the forefront of many very important activities, starting hospitals, colleges, nursing centers. My home church in Aiken, the other St. John's, provided the space initially for a very renowned now prized orthopedic facility, and as well a center to serve persons with special needs, which now has facilities for children, youth, and adults. Ryan reminded us a few moments ago of how our church here at Rock Hill is blessed 
with many ways in which we reach out beyond these walls. And now we have a beautiful, newly redeveloped space, our new Risher Brava Missions Room, from which we can plan and organize, outreach and care even more effectively to our community. This was Evan Crockford's Eagle Scout project, I am proud to say. To go further in understanding what makes serving others differently in the church than in other groups is this important, important concept. It goes back to what I talked about a minute ago in Wesley's discussion about both personal piety and service. As Christ's disciples, the work you and I do together is truly not voluntary. It is not performed just to fill up our time and schedules. Uh, this is not just busy work that we're doing. I want to say that again for us to hear. As Christ's disciples, the work you and I do together is truly not voluntary. It is not performed to fill up our time schedules. It is also not some form of policies or politics. Christian service and social justice comes from the love of Christ inside of you, which requires, it compels, it directs you to share that love with other people. Think about if you've been blessed to be a parent or have a young person that you were very close to. Uh, when you feel that affection for them, you are just pushed to go and to respond and to care for them. We've had our granddaughter since uh, Thursday. Uh, she's a busy person, yes, at almost three, but that love that I feel for her makes me want to care for her. It's the same thing in our love for Christ and then our desire to serve. To do Christian service is not something you and I choose. God chooses you. And then you must, you have to, you, you are compelled to share that deep connection and love with someone else. You may have noticed on the news this week that President and Mrs. Biden went to visit former President and Mrs. Jimmy Carter, who were unable due to their health and advanced age to attend the recent inauguration. Now, if you look at the life of Rosalind and Jimmy Carter, you can say, you know, he left after four years. He could have gone home to Plains, Georgia and just sat around and be waited upon by the Secret Service and their staff. He was relatively young when he retired from the presidency. But instead, they developed an institute to provide relief and help to nations all around the world. They uplifted and highlighted the work of Habitat for Humanity. I saw a picture of him with a hammer, and you know what he was doing. He was working on a Habitat house. Now, this was not done just from some sort of political motivation alone. I don't think they did it just to get nice press but it was more so from their deep Christian Southern Baptist faith. He, for many years, has taught a Sunday school class at their church that is extremely popular, but that fills up. I don't know if he's able to do it anymore due his, to his age, but their sanctuary, the Marantha Baptist Church, is packed. He's not the only former president who has done such. President George W. Bush has published two books, including beautiful portraits that he painted and highlights in one volume of veterans who have served 
and one of immigrants. And he and Mrs. Bush welcomed a number of new citizens recently who took their oath of citizenship right on the Today Morning Show. And if you don't know, the Bushes are of our variety. They are United Methodists in Texas. The New, great, the new Testament's great commandment from Jesus wants you and I to love and worship the Heavenly Father. And in the second part of the commandment, you are to love your neighbor, your fellow human beings as yourself. My theology professor, Dean Robert Cushman, said this is the heart of the Christian gospel. This is the most important scripture passage we should know. And Adam Hamilton has challenged you and me to offer five prayers and words of thanks to God to read at least five scripture verses a day or five chapters in a week. Well, this week he's asking us to do five intentional acts of kindness every week. And each week, you remember, Adam is using one, the five fingers of your hand as a memory helper. Five prayers and words of thanks to God, five verses or chapters of Scripture, now five intentional acts of kindness. And these do not have to be sophisticated, press-providing acts. They can be simple, basic, everyday acts of kindness. My mother told me on the phone this week, she's going to be 85 in August. She really can't walk very well. She has health issues that she needs to go to the doctor about, but she's stubborn and won't. She went and took to her back door neighbor, who just turned 60, a sandwich for her birthday. Now, that is nothing terribly miraculous at all. It's not something you're going to see on some action movie highlighted or some grand drama. It is simple, basic, ordinary. An old storekeeper was so committed to hard work and service that he ran the store and also the community post office. My uncle did this over in Pickens County. He had no helper, and when he had to leave his store to meet the mailman, he was tormented by the thoughts of people stopping by the store and wanting to get something to drink or to get gas, and the store was closed because he was going to pick up the mail. Well, finally it hit upon him a shrewd solution. He printed a sign in bold letters that explained everything during his enforced absence. Back in 15 minutes, gone already 10. You can laugh, you know, it's okay. Even though it's a dad humor joke, I know. Often, these chances, these doors to serve and care can come when you least expect it. It happened to me in the grocery store checkout line. I'm still kind of working with someone at my cardiac rehab place. It can happen at the gas station. It can happen when you are way too busy to be interrupted when you really don't want to be somewhere with that particular person who is really the biggest pain in the, well, you get the idea. Our Savior uses such holy interruptions, 
such holy stops to call you and me to serve, to help, to love. Dr. Bellflowers had a beautiful prelude to one of my favorite hymns, Dross in the Spirit's Tether. Well, I'm kind of giving it a different title. Can you allow God to sort of hold you hostage to the Holy Spirit to do his work? Will you open your heart to the love of God and share that love in action, in service, with greater commitment than ever. You're invited to turn in your worship bulletin to our confession and pardon and to our great thanksgiving for Holy Communion. Saving grace of Christ Jesus. Look upon us, loving Savior. Separate our thoughts and evaluate our feelings. Deal firmly with those things that have inhibited our love and diverted our energies. Loving From God, God, whatever you see as self righteous, righteous censure, censure, as, as twisted, twisted straighten, as, as heartless, heartless soften, as, as fruitless prune, as, as infected. Cleanse. Flood your relentless spirit through our whole being, sweeping away guilt and its lethargy, and by the saving grace of Christ Jesus, heal the hidden springs of our personality. Thank you, holy friend, for answering our prayers before we get around to asking them, and for doing so much more than we ask or think, through your Son and Savior. Amen. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we are radically renewed, a radically renewed community. Old things are done away with. All things become new. We are agents of grace and reconciliation. With every step or stumble, Christ will be with us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand for the opening sentences of our great thanksgiving. As you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You have made us through love, and through love we have our being. We can love because you loved us first. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. You may be seated. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we abide in him, he abides in you. We will have abundant life that bears much fruit. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who have been oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. 
by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night when he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, for he abides in us and we in him. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you and for me. The blood of Christ, shed for you and for me. Before we go on... Does everybody have a communion packet? You may receive the elements. For those who may be new to this, if you will take it, there's a, a film on the top that you'll peel back to expose the wafer. Take that and then peel back the rest to take the juice. Pray with me. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. May the sacrament empower us in love. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
we are now raised with Christ to life eternal. Let the earth quake and let our lives serve this Easter season and every day. Live differently. Amen. Hallelujah.